In high school, I became a huge James Brown fan. Not only from the radio, but my friend Bing Heaster introduced me to the Live at the Apollo album. This was the full-on James Brown experience from the hardest working man in show business. The gut bumps, the bass thumps, the low vibrations causing sexual sensations. James Brown said that every instrument should sound like a drum and every downbeat should be on what he called the one. I don't care. My mind had been sufficiently blown. At first, my Protestant guilt made me feel so bad about something that was making me feel so good, but I got over it. In 12th grade, Bing and I cut school to see James Brown in concert. We took the train to the Uptown Theater. The Uptown was the Apollo of Philadelphia. All the famous R&B acts performed there. Great old Art Deco Theater. 1,500 seats, it was packed to the rafters for the afternoon show. We were the only two white people in the place. Getting scrutinized, not in a scary way, Folks were just looking at us like they knew they were seeing the future. They were just going to have to give up 100% ownership of their most precious commodity, the godfather of soul. Next thing you know, you got two pasty white boys in the audience at the Uptown looking like two miniature marshmallows on top of a giant chocolate sheet cake. Bing and I didn't think that deep about it. We were just following the funk. This music was so different and so dangerous, way more different and dangerous than Motown. Motown was like Sidney Poitier and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, meeting white people halfway. James Brown didn't meet anybody halfway. No compromises, no forced smiles. If James Brown showed up for dinner, Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn would have been afraid to answer the door. And that's why we loved it. 